What is that? What are you wearing? It's a poncho. We have water puddles to go through. It rained today. We're gonna go through some puddles. Hop in, dinner. <laughs> All right. I just got soaked. <laughs> Did you get wet on that one? <laughs> so I think we're more yeah. wet than you are. I wore a poncho. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Put a poncho on. <laughs> issues on the front end of this so we figured we'd take it through the car wash first before we get it inside and get it fixed. We keep losing our alignment and we're not really sure why. How did you get so much water on you? I wonder. I wonder what happened. That was lots of fun. The windshield wipers worked for you. Yeah, because they were lubricated by all that water. Yeah, I don't know how. You guys go watch our video of bringing this from Kansas. These did not work. I got my hands stuck in the radio port trying to get them to work. All right, so all of you that are new to this channel, let me explain what the 69 Dodge Charger is. This is gonna be our giveaway. When we hit 1 million subscribers, we are going to give this car away. It may not look like much right now. She's a diamond in the rough. By the time we hit a million, we will have restored this car. It's gonna have new motor, new tranny, all the suspension rebuilt, perfect, back to where it should be. We're gonna have a brand new paint job on this, and we're gonna be asking you guys the entire way through what you want us to do. Everything is gonna be interactive. If you guys can think of it, we're gonna try to do it to this car. We may just take our time. We may get forced to do it quick. If we hit a million, we've gotta have this car done because that's when the giveaway starts. Go back to our last videos of bringing it home from Kansas and check it out. We drove this thing 1,200 miles, me and Hillbilly. And me too, I was in the back. The only thing we were missing, dinner. That's the only thing that would have made that trip even better. The next car that we go get, maybe we'll have to take dinner. Should we take him with on a road trip? You decide. All right, so we've got an alignment issue. We're gonna take this thing apart and try to figure out what's going on with it because every time we drive it, it goes like this. So we've had it aligned twice, we've aligned it once. So we're gonna get this thing jacked up, get the wheels off and figure it out. And hopefully we can get it taken care of. So I think for the, the heart, we should put a Hellcat in there. You know how much power and how much fun this car would be with a Hellcat? Yeah, but what if whoever wins it doesn't want a Hellcat? Twin turbo twin Hellcat? Oh, phew, now we're getting insane. Who wouldn't want power? Power's nice. <laughs> they do make Hellcats on a, on a pallet. Maybe we'll have to look into that. Let's get this thing jacked up, get the wheels off, and let's figure out what's going on with it. So the reason we want to fix this alignment so bad is because it's starting to wear our tires funky. These are some awesome tires, and we don't want to ruin them. So we're trying to catch the issue early. We've got a little bit of a ridge right here. We're going to get this problem solved, get out on the road and drive these, and get these back symmetrical. This is something that anybody could do. He let the jack down and the jack stand rolled this in. So now you want to relieve the pressure. I've got some pressure here that was relieved. Pull out on that, dude. Pull it. Hold it, hold it. Okay. Oh, girl. The back. Today wasn't supposed to be a bodywork day. Can you pull here so I can tap there? All right, we're gonna use the frame rack of dinner. Let's give some pressure. Okay, hold it. All right. <whistles> Disaster averted. I'm just surprised you didn't beat me up. Do you know what we do for a living? We fix things. We fix things. So when you make a mistake, you fix it. At least you've seen it and I've seen it at the when it happened, because it, it could have been a lot worse if it went all the way down. Okay, it's not under the frame, right? It's not, not the fender. A, yeah, it's not under the fender. We're gonna get this jacked up. We're gonna check our alignment with a tape measure first to see how far it's off, and then we're gonna figure out what's going on. And we're gonna fix it. Gotta be very careful. I don't need to take dinner's job from him from crushing fenders. Ah, oh, sure missed you, sweetheart. He needs a flush. <laughs> <laughs> this thing needs flushed out. I think it needs more than just a flush. Four, this is a 440? It's a 440. What if we put the, what, what was the original in it? 392? 383. Or 383? So this is an original 383 car. 
So it's already been unnumbers matching. So if we do a resto mod or anything like that, that's fine. It's not numbers matching. So we're not ruining anything. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a measurement. No, I find a groove that's the same that you can do front and back. That's how I do it. You got it? Uh-huh. the numbers? Yep. Holy crap. So we were 54 and 7 eighths up front. We are now 55 and 3 eighths. So we're a full half inch off. I think a half inch is too big. Makes tires look like they do. You like that? Custom. Let's get the wheels off and let's figure out why we're towed in. Seems like yesterday we were just putting them on. Still looks pretty good over here. One thing I'm gonna check is that the upper control arms have cam bolts and washers. This side does have the cam bolts and the cam washers. So that's a plus. So once Hillbilly gets that side off, we'll hurry and check the other side. So I'll get these lug nuts removed to see if we can't spot why it's uh, alignment keeps getting out of whack. So maybe we can go get it aligned one last time and it stays aligned. There's a cam washer missing. Serious? Serious. hot. Where? This back one. <laughs> well, okay. That makes total sense. If that washer's not there, that's gonna kick the back in and out. Let's grab a ratchet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this nut off and then we're gonna go out to the boneyard and see if we can find us a cam washer. Oh my heck. Yeah, you must have done the side. <sighs> All right, we're gonna go back to Charger Row in our boneyard and we're gonna find a part. So we're at the boneyard. All these cars are good, so I don't really wanna pull parts off, so. We'll choose the worst one. They're, none of them are bad. This one's the most valuable one I've got. This car, it's a 1969 Dodge Charger with a 68 paint coat and it's an RT, a true RT. Well, let's rummage inside to see if we can't find one of those just laying around inside somewhere. Ah, eh, that's too much work. I might need your muscles though. Yeah, it seems like too much like work. Hey, this has power steering in it. We could take it off and put it in the other charger. We could take the entire suspension cross member out, sandblast it all, powder coat it up at Kevin's, make it super sweet, and put it back in. It's taking four hours. Ugh, I'm tired. Oh, there goes my phone. Puts it in his shirt pocket where it does not belong. Voila! Look at all that work for that little guy right there. All right, back to the mechanic shop. I'm getting it in. I have to do it by braille. I think I'm getting it. We got the washer in. The next step in the process, we'll be getting the wheels back on. We're gonna check the toe in and toe out. And then we'll most likely run this back up, get it aligned again, just so that it's 100% correct. And then all we gotta do is cruise it. We got a couple of parts that showed up. So I think we gotta go see what we got. I got the light. It's warm. All right, so we got a couple boxes, got some floor pan stuff, so we're gonna pull it out and take a look at it. There's something else. Nothing to see here. We got some trunk floor braces. So these are the fuel tank braces that go underneath the new floor. We got two different options on our floor pans. We've got an entire floor pan. If we can fit it in, we'll use. If not, we have two halves. I think he fell asleep. That's not even fair. Hmm? I'm in my house, leave me alone. <laughs> Special delivery, one hillbilly in a box. Oh. And another box. Look, he was in there getting a box. Why, thank you. It wasn't a very comfortable pillow. These are the rear deck to floor braces. This is an entire trunk floor pan. We've got a rotten floor, so we've got to figure out what to do with that. We may or may not use this full floor, we might use the half floors. We got a trunk floor extension. We know these are rotten. On the back side of the quarter panels, this piece is all rotted out. So we're gonna be for sure changing these. Smells like new paper. This is an end cap for the rocker panel because we're gonna be changing the rocker, but the outer and inner rocker panels are on a national back order. So this is the only part of the rocker panel that we have. No good a cap will do without the new rocker. I agree. We have a half of a floor. If we don't change the quarter panels, we can cut that trunk floor out and then we can put a right hand and a left hand and we can seam it in the middle. I got a right hand. Got a right hand also, what the heck? Two rights ain't gonna be your... Two good. rights make it wrong. Okay, so on this left hand side, we've got a little bit of a bevel here. That's for the overlap to where we can plug weld it right down the center. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what if I can figure out how to get in this trunk. One of the Chrysler keys. 
These are some worn out keys. And if I can ever find the right key to open this trunk, that'd be amazing. I don't think we've opened it since we've been back in Utah. We might have to go back to Kansas to open it. How does that work? I tried every single key. Now both key rings have a key that works. But neither one was actually opening it. Let's get the wheels on it. Maybe with it being jacked up, it's got some torque on it or something, I don't know. So we'll get the wheels put back on this. We got some stickers to hang on that door. There's one for the Bronco. My side's on, he really just needs to button his side up, then we'll measure it, and we'll get it off the jack stand. Big bounce ball. Even with these wheels being dusty, they still look good. Okay, we're at 54 and 7 eighths, well, we are now. We were at 55 on the front, now we are at 55 and 3 eighths. So we got three eighths of an inch. It's pretty close, not perfect, but we'll get it back up to the alignment shop and have it adjusted on a machine. Where's dinner? We need this fender bent. At least we fixed it. Now that we've got it off a of stance, we got the wheels back on. Let's go see if this trunk will even open. Something's wrong. It's like it's not turning the mechanism. It's gotta have the magic touch. Oh, you know what we should do? Free. Free. Go grab a can. All right, this is by far, and this is not a sponsored ad, but this free by Certified Labs is the greatest penetrating oil I've ever used in my life. So let's just move it up. Look at that. She was just a little gummed up. I told you this stuff's the best. All right, that's much better. Okay, now that we've got that all taken care of, so if you check out this trunk, this is literally the only rust in the entire car. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the whole trunk out and we're gonna put those trunk halves in and put trunk floor extensions and fix the bottom of the quarter panels, getting this thing all just rock solid so there's no rust. We've still got a few more parts we need to get here before we can do any of that. We're gonna have to drop the tank back out of this thing, pull the rear bumper. The balloon. The, yeah, the balloon tank. Hillbilly put some air in Candace and the tank went Foom. We gained three extra gallons. That's where we're at. I say we take this thing for a ride and see what it does. accomplished done on the charger for today as always we appreciate you guys and if you enjoyed this episode go check out this one